Hello, my name is Reverend Tammy Barthels. I am the pastor at Emmanuel Lutheran in Rhinelander, Wisconsin, and the president of the Headwater Conference, Conference 3, which includes Pioneer Lake in Conover, Prince of Peace in Eagle River, Ascension in Calvary in Monaco, Wisconsin, Trinity and Emmanuel in Rhinelander, Shepherd of the Lakes in Saner, Wisconsin, and Faith Lutheran in Three Lakes. The verse on hope that I chose is Romans 5, 5. And hope does not disappoint us because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit. I thought of this verse immediately when Bishop Catherine asked if we would do a devotion on a Bible verse that has to do with hope, our theme this year for Synod Assembly. This is the verse that I use at each funeral or memorial service that I preside at. It is a verse that reminds us that hope, that God, is always with us. That God's promise of eternal life is true. This gives us hope when we feel hopeless. No one can take this hope from us because the Holy Spirit has poured it into our hearts. It is with us forever. Even though I knew this is the verse I would probably do a devotion on, it didn't stop me from looking up other verses on hope through Bible Gateway, my Bible app. I entered the word hope into the search engine and 180 verses came up, 97 in the Hebrew scriptures and 83 in the New Testament. The Book of Psalms had the most with 34, with the Book of Job running in second with 18 verses. That most definitely surprised me because the Book of Job doesn't strike me necessarily as a book of hope. But as I reread Job's story, Job does not lose hope in his Lord. The journey for Job was not easy. The book of Job explores the story of good, innocent man who suffers terrible loss. Everything he has is destroyed. His wealth, his beloved children, his health. The book of Job explores questions such as, why do the innocent suffer? Where is God in my suffering? What kind of world is this? Am I sure we have asked, I am sure we have asked many of these questions during this past year with the pandemic, the election, civil unrest, personal trauma, and much more. Throughout the book of Job, Job holds his innocence, even when his friends accuse him of sin and calls him to repent. His suffering is not the result of sin, and his friends' accusations only add to Job's suffering. What the book of Job does for me is remind me that it is okay to lament. Lament over all that we have lost. But it also teaches me about the power of prayer. Job continues to pray to God. 
Job, in his anger and his suffering, in his anguish, continually calls out to God. He still knows that God is with him. And here's the other thing that I remember about the book of Job. At the end, God takes Job on a grand tour of the cosmos. God does not speak of Job's suffering, but instead takes Job's focus off himself and helps him to see the world around him. The world as God described it is a good, ordered creation, but it is also given a certain freedom. God takes delight in the creatures, the seas and the wild animals. God cares for them as God cares for us. In the face of Job's suffering, he is invited to see and delight in the world God has created. Job is invited to live in it with the same freedom God gives all of God's creatures. In spite of his great suffering, Job accepts that invitation and chooses to live and love again. I believe that we too are invited to see and delight in the world God has created and to choose to live and love again, to plant ourselves in God's hope. Yes, 2020 was a trying year. We had our time of anger and anguish, our time to lament. But now is the time to focus on the hope that God has given us in Christ Jesus. Remember that hope does not disappoint us because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit. And it is this hope in which we stand, in which we say, thanks be to God.